In the harrowing aftermath of sexual assaults, survivors who courageously step forward must recount the ordeal to investigators and endure probes by medical examiners, all in the hope of bringing their attackers to justice. We found that our success rate is higher when there is a thorough exam as opposed to otherwise. So we really wanted to impact sexual assault investigation on a whole in St. Lucia from the collection um, all the way through to prosecution by involving all of the stakeholders. Seeking to fine-tune sexual assault evidence collection, the St. Lucia Forensic Sciences Lab conducted a training course from January 8th to the 12th for law enforcement, legal and medical professionals. Lab Director Fernanda Henry hopes the training will empower law officers to adeptly handle the intricacies of sensitive sexual assault cases. We transformed the sexual assault kit to 10 steps to make it much simpler or much, much less onerous for the medical practitioner to, to help them to be a little bit more receptive to doing the exam and also to increase their level of thoroughness because that is really important in the evidence collection. From the scientific perspective, we can see when the evidence, when the examination was thorough and when it wasn't. Certified sexual assault examiner Dr. Rhonda Hudson from Jamaica led the training course aiming to educate participants on understanding injuries during sexual assaults and their documentation, along with the scientific significance of proper evidence collection. Whether it's a man or a woman, or even a child, that you are going to find injuries of the genital area. That's a biggest myth that we have to dispel, both amongst doctors, everyone really because that is not true. We know that approximately only about 75% of all cases, in fact, the other way around, 75% of all cases are normal. And we find that studies have shown that 95% of all cases of child sexual abuse may not have any injuries at all. So that's a big, I think, a sort of a whole overhaul of, of how we think about these cases. And then, of course, that we have to dispel the myth that persons who are sexually assaulted have a look, a certain look. And if they're not looking that way, then maybe they're not assaulted. We've heard, for example, doctors even indicated that maybe, you know, if, if we don't find any injuries, maybe they're lying. And that's unfortunate. Because if we set out from the outset to believe that the person that we are examining or interacting with is lying, then perhaps we're not doing due diligence. The training course also covered the psychology of rape, trauma, and memory associated with sexual assaults. There were complaints generally by the legal fraternity, not, ne not, not really necessarily in St. Lucia, but elsewhere. So we, we go to conferences and there's, it always comes up that doctors, your medical report is deficient, it's faulty, it's prejudicial. And therefore, my, my um, invitation was to try to get a, a holistic approach to the examination of, of a sexual assault um, survivor. Not just, okay, I examine you and I find an injury. But it goes beyond that because the courts require us as well to have some input, some information that would allow them to make a decision as to whether or not a crime has occurred. And we do know there's a lot of weight put on, on, on what a doctor says and what a doctor writes. And therefore, if we are not careful, we may do that survive an injustice. Determined to steer investigators away from cognitive biases and toward reliance on facts and forensics, forensic experts aim to ensure the optimal outcome for survivors of sexual assaults through objective investigations.